Well, uh, first of all, I want to uh, do two thank yous. Two thank yous. Uh, the first thank you is to the people who you see behind me who have stepped up to be part of the initiative that we're going to be talking about today. And without their support and without their efforts, uh, we could not get close to being successful in what we're attempting to do. The second thank you, which is just as important and in many ways more important, are those people who voted for issue 32. Uh, the half a percent uh, income tax increase. Without that vote and without your support, um, we would not be here today talking about uh, this initiative. Uh, we would probably be talking about how we would be cutting services, uh, laying people off, and, and all those kind of negative things. So I want to uh, constantly remind people that it is the people of the city of Cleveland who voted for issue 32 that allows things like this, this initiative, to occur. Well, um, again, thanks for being here. And we want to talk about today uh, the things that we've done and the things that we will be doing going forward in regards to our Office of Prevention, Intervention, and Opportunity for Youth and Young Adults. Now, I created this office uh, in 2017 as we attempt to pull together a holistic approach to dealing with young people, particularly young people who are uh, either in a violent situation or are engaged in violence, or even those young people who, uh, in spite of all that, are still trying to do the right thing. And I constantly remind people that um, violence and crime is a symptom. Is a symptom. It's a symptom of a underlining uh, ills that result in violence, that result in crime. And so we cannot just rely on the police department to resolve the issue of violence and crime. It is a deeper community issue that we have to address and it's a community effort and that's why you see the people behind us. Everything that we've been successful at as a city we've done as one community, one Cleveland. And when we've done that, we've always been successful and that's the approach that we're taking here. And, and again, that's why I've created this office and have Mr. D Dwayne Deskin in, as the chief of, of this office so, and made it a cabinet level position to raise the profile, the level of the profile of this so that we can have a broader community effort in our uh, prevention, intervention, and opportunities for young people. And again, the purpose of the office is to find and connect youth and young adults to programs, support systems, jobs, educational opportunities, whatever it is that they need uh, in order to help them be successful and become a productive part of our community. Now, th these are youth uh, and young people who may be involved, as I said, in criminal activity. Those young people are, are youth that are on the bubble, they could go either way. And, and, and also the ones that uh, traditionally are left out are those young people and youth that uh, are doing the right thing. They're doing the right thing in spite of the negative influence of the environment, but they struggle. They struggle on a daily basis uh, to stay on the, the right path. And so we want to make sure that they're, uh, that they're not left out. Now, to accomplish this, as I said, we've uh, brought on Mr. Deskin, who is the honcho, the chief of all this, who is providing uh, the connection that is talking to the community, talking to uh, uh, people who have initiatives and programs that kind of pull together this internal and external collaboration to work on what we need to have worked on in order for us to be successful. So accomplishing this goal, other than just hiring Mr. Deskin, we have two crime an analysts and two outreach workers uh, and a grants administrator, along with a $1 million budget to partner with outside agencies on crime reduction through the Community Relations Board. We have contracted with four uh, partner agencies on street outreach uh, there behind me. Uh, the Department of Public Health is hiring two new positions. One is an epidemiologist to study youth violence as a public health issue and a, tra a trauma counselor to refer young people to services that they need. Uh, uh, more and more what we're seeing 
uh, uh, people who have what we, I guess they would call it in the Army, post-traumatic stress syndrome uh, because they are in an environment that has violence and, and they participate in violence or been the victim of violence. And it creates trauma situations for, for young people and it creates trauma situation for, for youth. I was sharing with someone earlier on a personal note, I have a five-year-old uh, great-grandson and, and he knows the difference between a firecracker and a gunshot. And when he hears a firecracker, he, he a firecracker, fireworks, but when he hears a gunshot, he gets real tense and he runs into the house and he sits down. He sits down. And, and so uh, to me, he's being traumatized. And so we have to address those kind of issues with young people who, uh, who are either witness or participate in violence on an everyday basis. The City of Cleveland Recreation Division has increased its staff and its programming by $2.3 million, again, to help in reducing youth violence and providing increased opportunity for young people. Uh, there's a $5 million uh, budget increase that we've done uh, out of this year's budget, again, thanks to issue 32, that we'll, we will be demolishing over 500 structures in the Safe Route to School initiative that we have. We have an additional $500,000 along with, uh, with Youth Opportunity Unlimited and their matching that will allow us to hire 500 uh, young people, youth, for the summer. Uh, 73 of them will be involved in, as members of the Mayor's Neighborhood Corps who are taking part in cleanup and beautification projects throughout the city, and I believe they start tomorrow on Lorraine Avenue. Uh, we've also increased the budget for the uh, city and Cleveland's police division on the enforcement side that will um, uh, hire up to 65 um, new police officers this year that will be part of the Neighborhood Impact Community Engagement Squad, which is the NICE unit. And, and they, will, they will engage uh, young people and engage the community in a way that will create better relationship, but they also will do urban policing, hardcore, aggressive urban policing in a constitutional way. We're establishing partnerships with outside agencies to bring support and guidance to youth and young adults, as well as initiatives to create a better police and community relations, such as NICE unit. You have the uh, ice cream truck here, and, and uh, Mr. Desk and, and uh, uh, Chief Drummer will talk about those things later. Uh, and, and what we also are doing is uh, many people think, and, and when they think of uh, uh, traumatization, or they think of uh, the need for youth and young adults, they always gravitate, gravitate to thinking it's only about young boys and young men. Well, that's not the case. Any of us who live in neighborhoods where there is uh, there are these kind of challenges, we recognize that it's not just young boys or, or young men, it is also young girls and young ladies. They are, they have the same impact and effect that, uh, uh, that it has on, uh, on the youth and young adults that are boys and men, it has on girls and women. So we are uh, in the process of developing a program specifically for young girls and, and for young women as they have to deal with the same environment that young boys and, and young men have to deal with. Again, this is a holistic approach. It's a holistic approach that we want to align what we do internally in, turn, in government along with our external partners for the goal and the purpose in mind is to help our youth and our young people in a way that they need help and to do prevention and preventing things from happening with them, interventing when there are things happening we need to intervene and also creating opportunities for them so that they can move on the right path of life. Uh, uh, finally, I want to thank again the people behind me uh, and, and especially the people who voted for issue 32 that makes this possible. Now I want to introduce Mr. Dwayne Deskin, our Chief of uh, Prevention, Intervention and Opportunity for Youth and Young Adults. And he'll go over uh, more detail of what I've been talking about. Thank you.
Again, good afternoon, everyone, on a beautiful day in, in, in our town. Um, uh, Mayor, on January 3rd, Mayor Jackson installed me as the first chief of prevention, intervention, and opportunity for youth and young adults. Uh, his unprecedented direction was clear. Uh, using public health model, we were to bring together existing private, public, and community efforts, filling gaps and leveraging resources to address the root causes of youth violence through a combination of prevention, intervention, and enforcement. Simply, the mayor said act with a sense of urgency to create an enduring multidisciplinary system, including epidemiologists and crime analysis, to prevent violence by youth and young adults by driving up the wheel of opportunity and driving down violence. Immediately, along with my talent assistant, Chiquita Bonner, uh, the mayor's administration began this process with the goal of having meaningful and new opportunities available for our youth by the end of May and the school year, a mere four months later. The mayor's public health approach to violence reduction is supported by extensive science, data, and experience. Our communities and our young are victims of six decades of structural violence, economic, educational, political, social, isolation, disinvestment, racism, and a loss of social capital. And then we add the real and perceived fear of crime and violence. The tremendous and sustained loss of social, economic, educational opportunities, especially for young people, created the adverse health conditions, the chronic stress that the mayor referred to, necessary to create and transmit violence from individuals to whole communities. These symptoms we see in high levels of infant mortality, decreases in learning and memory, lower educational attainment, underemployment and unemployment, poverty, lower life expectancy, vacant and abandoned housing, economic disinvestment, alcohol, substance abuse, and for a smaller percentage, violence. Left unchecked, violence is like a contagion. It spreads through individuals and communities, and no human, regardless of race or gender, is immune. As a result, after the fact solutions using law enforcement alone has not stopped violence here or across the nation. Indeed, a great fighter, former General Douglas MacArthur, noted that on Earth, there is no security, only opportunity. The public health model, which is familiar to us all, incorporates law enforcement and focuses on preventing violence before it spreads and eliminating the root causes that formed it in the beginning. In the past few weeks, as the mayor said, with the support from Issue 32, he has announced major efforts in three areas to tackle structural violence affecting our built environment, social and community environment, and our economic and educational environment, all of which reduce the structural violence affecting our communities and our youth. These initiatives include, as he mentioned, the neighborhood built environment, including street sweeping, pothole repair, waste collection, road and park and playground infrastructure repairs, illegal dumping, better inspections and demolitions of vacant abandoned buildings, especially those near our safe routes to our public and elementary schools, over $65 million in neighborhood and commercial and residential development, and $500 million in capital improvements, the Mayor's Job Match Week at our recreation centers, continuing improvements under the Cleveland Plan for Education, and Cleveland's Police Neighborhood Impact and Community Engagement Units. During the four, first mo four months of my tenure, we established partnerships with collaboration with dozens of individuals, some of whom are here today and behind me, representing over 25 city departments, state and county government agencies, law enforcement, the juvenile court, health systems, business and nonprofit organizations, educational institutions, and the faith community. Based on scientific research, our goal is simply to increase the opportunities for young people to interact over time with a caring adult in, va in youth valued activities, including jobs. Today, we announced the first steps in this public health strategy to improve opportunities and interventions for our youth and young adults. We have over 20 new opportunities and interventions to reach over 30,000 young people this summer. These best practice activities include dance, photography, chess, yoga, healthy relationships and leadership, a healthy food truck, theater, near peer life schools trainings, extended hours at eight recreation centers, 
a 40% increase in youth employment from 2016, increase in high school access to the Youth Resource Center where they can learn how to complete a resume, how to engage in an interview, and the soft skills necessary for success, the Mayor Jackson's Neighborhood Corps, the ice cream truck, call-ins from Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections, call-ins from the Juvenile Justice Center, call-ins from the Ohio Department of Youth Services, just to name a few. In addition, we have expanded the Peacemakers Alliance to interrupt and ultimately stop the spread of violence. In all, we've created multiple opportunities to address each of the four areas that create and spread violence among young people. And over the past four months, we've leveraged approximately $1.1 million. As a gifted Albert Einstein observed, all that is valuable in human society depends on opportunity. Working together, Cleveland under the leadership of Mayor Jackson is po poised to create an enduring system that prevents youth violence by driving up interventions and opportunities for youth across the city. It takes time and courage. Ultimately, must be willing to coordinate and collaborate as one community to be a great city. And that choice is ours. Thank you all very much. And I'd like to introduce Director Cox. Uh, thank you, Chief Deskins. Uh, again, my name is Michael Cox. I'm the Director of Public Works for the City of Cleveland. Uh, one of my responsibilities is the Recreation Center, Parks and Recreation, which I believe is very important to what we do in the city for these young people. Uh, as the, uh, uh, Chief Deskins said, we talked about our extending our summer hours at, our, at eight recreation centers, which we have done. Starting today, we extend our hours to 11 o'clock. Uh, which will give us three extra hours that we can keep young people off the streets inside in a safe environment. So those eight centers uh, are Lonnie Burton, Glenville, Michael Zone, Fairfax, Cadell, Zelma George, Earl B. Turner, and Thurgood Marshall. Uh, they were chosen because we worked with our, our partners in the Cleveland Police Department to see where the, where the most activity is happening in and around our rec centers. So those, that is why we chose those eight to be as effective as we can with the uh, with the keeping young people again off the streets, and we do, do we do abide by the curfew. Children that are a certain age have to be out the center at a certain time. Uh, so when we say 11 o'clock, we don't keep young people out at the curfew. Uh, uh, Chief Deskins also mentioned the near peer program that's conducted by Case Western Reserve University Director of Public Health that trains our youth uh, <coughs> development workers in. Uh, life skills that will give them the ability to be peer counselors for uh, middle school kids. So it's, it's peer to peers, young people helping young people. So that's part of what we've done so far this year. Uh, again, these programs are non-traditional recreation programs. These are not bouncing basketball. We understand that it's no longer just what we have to do in recreation. Uh, Mayor Jackson said to me uh, earlier this year, we have to change the culture of what we do in recreation centers and how we, what we, what we have to offer these young people. So, uh, and again, we have a girl circle program that's, that's conducted by the uh, Cleveland Rape Crisis Center that provides information on young people on how to stay out of situations that may cause them some harm. Uh, we, uh, we also, as the mayor said, I thank you also because with the passage of issue 32, we were able to hire 42 new staff members in the Division of Recreation. That is a great uh, number that would allow us to, that would allow us to put not only staff in our rec centers, but to put off-duty Cleveland police officers in all 21 of our of our recreation centers. We also will put uh, in next summer we'll have police officers where we had 11 pools covered. We'll have all of our pools covered, all 22 of our outdoor pools. So that was a increase in our budget of, of, of over $290,000, which helps to make sure that we keep our lifeguards trained on the water and someone else watching the pool, the, the young people in the pool. So it helps us to make sure that we have a safe summer. All these things are, are helpful to us. Uh, so again, we're doing those things. I also encourage everyone here to look at, the, at, our, at our website, the Cleveland City of Cleveland website, and see all the other programs that we, have, we offer for young people during the summer and the fall and the winter. We have 
programs that you just won't believe in this, it, whether it's baseball in the summer, the supervised playground activities, which you see over here, the young people in the, in the, in the orange shirts, our, our staff playground uh, workers, we have our swimming pools, we have fine arts performance, and we have adult pro uh, programs such as exercise, weightlifting, and senior activities. So, and the most important part, there are no charges for our, for our services. All of our programs are free, and we welcome everyone, everyone, to come in uh, to our rec centers and enjoy the experience that we have in our, our recreation program. Uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, introduce to you a gentleman who is a great partner of ours uh, in recreation and takes care of all the needs that we have uh, safety-wise, and uh, W.C. Wayne Drummond. Thank you, Director Cox. Uh, as stated, my name is Wayne Drummond. I'm Deputy Chief with the Cleveland Division of Police on behalf of uh, Chief Williams, who's unable to be here. I'd like to talk about a couple of things that we're doing. And, and like the mayor uh, stated before, because of issue 32, we're able to do some things. And one of the things we're going to do is uh, implement our NICE unit, and that's the Neighborhood Impact uh, neighborhood Impact Community Engagement Unit. It's a squad of officers that uh, we started uh, this year, January 27, 2017. We uh, initially started with 10 officers and one sergeant. Um, these officers are, are charged with uh, proactively targeting high crime areas. We're talking about individuals involved in violent crimes, using guns and other uh, type of uh, weapons. These officers target those particular areas. These officers, you'll see, also will be out on bikes. As you can see, we have bikes uh, to my left and also to my right. These officers ride in uh, all kind of weather, uh, cold, rain. Um, it doesn't matter, they're out. And part of uh, their uh, responsibilities, not only enforcement, which is extremely important, but also engagement, community engagement. Um, they actually um, are much more approachable on the bikes. Uh, the kids uh, come up to them, and not only kids, but also the adults approach them and engage them in conversation. And that's extremely important in what we're trying to do. It's not all uh, about enforcement, and don't get me wrong, enforcement is extremely important, but it's also about working collaboratively with the community. And part of that is the, uh, the problem-oriented policing, which is part of the concept of the NICE unit, and that's to actually engage with the community members identify whatever those issues may be and working collaboratively with the police department, the community members, the other city uh, departments and so forth to hopefully take care of that particular situation. Since the implementation of the NICE unit, again, which started this year in January, we added an additional 10 officers to that unit. So we have a total right now of 20 officers and two sergeants, uh, two squads, which we have working primarily at night, which we, when we have a, a, a quite an increase in, in the violent activities sometimes. So these particular officers, since the inception, they've confiscated over 20 uh, weapons already, handguns. Uh, they've made numerous arrests relative to phone assault with those handguns and also carrying a concealed weapon. Um, so they've been very active. Again, they're charged with uh, targeting in a very aggressive and constitutionally way of these particular hot spots. How can the public help? Uh, that's, that's easy. It's like I was talking about uh, before. It's collaboratively working together. If you see something, say something. If you see something that's not right, um, give us a call. Let us come out. Let's take care of it. That's vitally important. Again, for us, it's just not about enforcement. It's about engaging, and part of our engagement is the ice cream truck, as you see over there. And, and uh, I hope you guys like ice cream because we have plenty of ice creams, uh, plenty of ice cream inside the truck that you can take advantage of. But it's important again for the community if you see something, say something, and, and get involved. Uh, right now, I'd like to introduce uh, the director of uh, community relations board, Grady Stevens. Thank you. Um, Deputy Chief Drummond. Uh, my name is Grady Stevens, and I am the Interim Director of Community Relations Board for the City of Cleveland. Um, as you have heard um, from many of our speakers today, uh, we have partnered with a, a great deal of individuals who have a lot of experience in doing this kind of work. And I'm so glad and I'm so proud to say that, that I am um, responsible for uh, a, a very good group who have worked in and around the city of Cleveland for some time now. Um, the city of Cleveland and Department of Community Relations has partnered with the Peacemakers Alliance for several years now. Uh, we are happy to announce that we have expanded that relationship 
Peacemakers Alliance, uh, Alliance now will be um, placing um, one additional person in uh, Metro Hospital to work in the trauma unit. And the purpose of that is to help us so that uh, we can stop any retaliation that might occur from any trauma that comes into that center via violence from uh, youth or someone else in our community. And we are so happy to be partnered with them. We also have the opportunity to place two in um, University Hospital in their trauma center. And uh, Peacemakers Alliance has, has been doing great work in the city of Cleveland on the east side and the west side of the city of Cleveland some years now. And uh, we are glad that they have the opportunity to bring on an additional eight new hires that will be working uh, east side and west side um, with our guardian angels, with uh, um, the uh, peacemakers on the east side. We have um, several individuals on the east side that they, they have partnered with and they'll be working with on the east side. But the guardian angels for one on the west side will be doing uh, great work and helping us to make sure that we keep order and stay ahead to prevent the violence that occurs on our streets. We have also partnered with Colors Community Resource. Um, they have the responsibility of working with CMHA on their properties. They will uh, work to identify youth and young adults uh, who may be borderline or may just need assistance to help them. You heard Director Cox talk about, we don't just want to look at the bad actors, but we also want to look at those ones who are borderline and may uh, um, be thinking about maybe getting into something that we don't want them to be involved in in the city of Cleveland. So we have those individuals that we also want to pull in and, and make sure that we point them in a positive direction. And so out of our CMHA properties, Colors Community Resource will be doing that with our young people from the ages of 15 to 25 and sometimes to 30 years of age. We also have partnered with uh, American. American will um, work with training. They will train our, our workers and how to identify um, these bad actors and, and also how to approach them, how to engage them when they're on the streets doing their work um, to make sure that they are, are, are really getting the ones that we want to get our hands around and, and that they're really uh, building a relationship with them and helping to point them in the right direction. They are also responsible for monitoring social media. They'll be on the, the social media websites um, telling us about uh, potential uh, outbreaks. As, as we know now, a lot of the beefs that happen in the city of Cleveland with our youth occur on social media. They begin right there on social media with their beefs and it pours out into the street. And so we have individuals who will monitor those sites and help us to identify those individuals. I'm glad to say that we have Kanumu uh, Lighthouse who will work with us um, with uh, license, entertainment, and nightclubs. Um, they will help us to survey and understand the activities that go on around these nightclubs and the uh, uh, bars to help us know um, a lot of times when when situations happen inside the clubs, they pour out onto our streets. We need individuals who can help us identify those individuals and help us to prevent something from happening on the streets because, as you heard the mayor say, we are in the business of prevention nowadays. We are no longer um, chasing situations, but now we are out to prevent a lot of the situations that have occurred in the city of Cleveland. Uh, we are glad to say that the Cleveland Youth Diversion Program who received an additional services and going through DH and, and others have placed summer jobs to our youth. There were a total of 212 young people who were referred to the city's youth diversion program this year. Out of those 212, 114 received summer jobs through our YLU program. Each of these programs will show a method of engagement, uh, what kind of resources are needed to help these individuals, how we will track them from start to finish, and we will show the success of our program through monitoring and understanding uh, the growth of our program. And so with that said, at this time, I will turn this back over into the hands of Mayor Frank Jackson. Thank you. Uh, as you can see, this is an attempt of a comprehensive, holistic approach to uh, dealing with the problems that exist in our neighborhood around uh, youth and, and young adults. And so with that, uh, we'll take any questions from whoever wants to ask them. 
Anybody? All of these pieces in place and out in the communities now? Yes, some of them are more out there than others. Uh, some are still in the developmental stage, but we also we have existing agencies that are out there long before we started this initiative. So part of what we're doing is partner with them. And so as we identify uh, youth and young adults who need assistance in the areas that they have expertise in, then we can refer uh, them to that type of service. Um, so they, some, some, as I say, some are in existence now, some are uh, in some point of engagement, others are in the developmental stage, but we just want to report out the things that we've done and, and, and what we're looking to do moving forward. As you know, we had a legislative agenda, and I don't remember all the, those pieces of legislation. The majority of them have been passed through city council at their last uh, council, and then there are a few pending pieces of legislation, all of which uh, goes to the appropriation for dollars for this initiative or to uh, the contracts associated with uh, with agencies to provide uh, programming and the support for the initiative. Yes, sir. Uh, I think it's really great that you guys are keeping the rec, uh, mm -hmm. the rec centers open until I think I understood 11 p.m., right. um, which is really fantastic. Um, you mentioned that the city hired two crime uh, analysts. Uh, I was wondering who they are and, and kind of what's their primary function uh, for you guys. Well, uh, I don't. Um who they are I'm not as familiar with, but let me tell you what their purpose is. Uh, we just don't do this in a helter-skelter way. We are trying to be uh, a holistic, not only in our community uh, initiative and supporting what we're trying to do, but we want to be effective and efficient in it. So you get a crime analyst who will actually look at where crimes are occurring, occurring. Uh, not only where they are occurring, but uh, what type of crimes they may be. And then from that, we can deploy uh, the police division in terms of enforcement, but we can also uh, have our people focused in those areas in terms of identifying uh, if there is some systematic approach to that crime. If there is, are there individuals who are key in, in that systematic approach? So that's, the, that's what we look at with the crime and that. Uh, they, I know they're working out of community. Uh, who, yeah, and you brought some people on. Don't oh, you? Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, what, he is, what he has said that in those two positions, we are in the process of hiring, so we have not hired individuals. But uh, community relations has brought on one uh, uh, outreach worker who has had uh, who has experience on outreaching into neighborhoods where these kind of activities occur. But we're, we're looking to bring them on. You know, it is a hiring process. We have a, a process we have to go through. Anybody else? Well, I thank you for being here. Anybody up here, by the way, if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one with anybody, just pull them to a side and, and they'll gladly talk to you about what it is they do i don't uh, and i'm not just talking about the city employees i'm talking about the, our partners uh, external to the city and again thank them for their willingness to be part of this and thank the people of the city clean for issue 32 thank you